Good evening. This is Pastor Mike Creepmore, pastor at Bimini Baptist Church in Rocky Mountain, North Carolina. It is a joy being with you uh, this afternoon. Uh, I'm really excited about our study in the book of Revelation and especially um, the uh, next two messages. I will be preaching from Revelation chapter 20 tonight and then I will backtrack just a tad and I will preach from Revelation chapter 19 on Sunday morning. So I'm really excited about these messages. Tonight, let's first look at Revelation chapter 20, verses 1 through 5, and we will be looking at this entire chapter tonight. Let's look at it. Then I saw an angel coming down from heaven with the key to the abyss and a great chain in his hand. He seized the dragon, the ancient serpent, who is the devil, and Satan, and bound him for a thousand years. He threw him into the abyss, closed it, and put a seal on it so that he would no longer receive the nations until the thousand years, years were completed. After that, he must be released for a short time. Then I saw thrones and people seated on them who were given authority to judge. I also saw people who had been beheaded because of their testimony about Jesus and because of God's word, who had not worshipped the beast or his image, and who had not accepted a mark on their foreheads or their hands. They came to life and reigned with the Messiah for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were completed. This is the first resurrection. Let's pray. Dear Father, tonight I pray that you'll speak this word into our hearts. Dear Father, I pray for Revelation chapter 20 as it is engrafted into us tonight. Dear Father, I pray that you will teach us. I pray that you will get me out of the way and that Jesus will be high and lifted in this message tonight. Lord, encourage us during these days. Give us words of encouragement tonight. I thank you for what you're going to speak into our hearts, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory for it all. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. There is coming a time when God would put the final period upon the final paragraph, upon the final page, upon the final book in human history. The unsaved dead will be raised from their graves to stand before Almighty God to be judged. And that's what this text is all about tonight. Revelation chapter 20, especially as we get a little further into chapter 20 in verses 12 through 15. The book of Revelation speaks of Jesus, the Lamb of God. After the great tribulation, Jesus will come back with his saints in power and great glory to rule and reign on earth for 1,000 years. The lion and the lamb will lie down together in peace. The earth will be filled with the knowledge and the glory of the Lord. Uh, we then come to the final judgment, which is the great white throne judgment, where God will rule in righteousness and justice forever. Proverbs 28, 5 um, is a good reference point here tonight. There are four basic things we find in this passage in Revelation about the final judgment of the unsaved dead. So let me jump into the text tonight and let's look at what the Bible says. The first thing that I see is in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. The fearful setting is described in this verse. The great white throne uh, judgment is described here. It is called great because it's of its awesome power. It is called white because of its unsullied purity. It is a throne because its ultimate purpose 
It's just judgment. Those who stand before the great white throne will be judged. The judge is the Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who is today the Savior, will one day become the judge. The lamb will become the lion. Jesus Christ is inescapable and unavoidable. If you do not meet him as Savior, you will meet him on that day as judge. You may have ignored him. You may have denied him. You may have disbelieved him, but one day you will stand before the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus is wearing a regal uh, robe of a king and a judge. His white hair speaks of his purity. His eyes, like a flame of fire, tells us that he sees right through us. He sees and knows all. Nothing escapes the God that we serve. The Lord Jesus can not be deceived. He cannot be discredited. His feet are like brass. Brass is an emblem and a symbol of judgment. He goes forth to judge. His voice is like the sound of many waters. His voice is like 100 cascading waterfalls. Can you imagine anyone talking back to Niagara Falls? The awkward position of those who are going to be judged is described. We see much of that in Revelation chapter 20, verse 11. Everything stable and everything that we've known and depended upon is now gone. It is now vanished. There is no place to run. There is no place to hide. Adam and Eve ran into the trees of the garden to hide themselves from the presence of the Lord. There is no hiding place at the great white throne judgment. Those standing before the great white throne judgment will face the Lord Jesus Christ. And he is the ultimate judge. And so let's go to a second statement tonight. Let's look at the forceful summons delivered in verses 12 and 11 in chapter number 20 of Revelation. The people who are called to judgment, the out and out sinner, uh, these are the people who hate God, hate Christ, and hate the church. They boldly and brazenly shake their fists in the face of Almighty God. And we see many of them today in 2020. How about the self-righteous people? These are the people who think that the gospel is for the drunkard or the murderer or the adulterer or the wife abuser or the blasphemer. They are nice people who live in nice homes, who have nice manners. They attend church and they sing hymns. There is no one so bad he cannot save, and there is no one so good that he need not be saved. The worst form of badness is human goodness when human goodness becomes a substitute for the new birth. How about the procrastinators? They intend to be saved one day. They really do intend on being saved. They know they're sinners and uh, they're not really against the gospel. They just do not intend to give their hearts to Jesus today. Proverbs 27, 1 is a good reference. If you're unsaved, please do not put off your salvation. 2 Corinthians 6, 2, another good reference. If you hear God's voice, harden not your heart. If you die without knowing Jesus personally, then you will spend an eternity in hell. Well, how about the unsaved church member? These are people who have religion, but they do not have a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. They are religious. They are not anti-God. They are counting on their church contributions and church attendance and church ritual to get them to heaven, but it won't. Religion never saved anyone. Jesus is the only one who can save a soul. We need to stop enduring religion 
and start enjoying salvation. 2 Corinthians 13, 5 is a good reference. Do you know Jesus? The question is not asking if you're religious. The question is not asking what denomination do you belong to. The question is not asking you if you know the plan of salvation, but do you know the man of salvation? Do you know the Lord Jesus Christ? And then we have those who have never heard the gospel. Though uh, one may not have enough light to save him, he has enough sin to condemn him. Romans 3.23, there are degrees of judgment. A reference here is Luke 12, Mark 6. Though they uh, will each be called to the judgment, those who willingly and knowingly refuse the Lord Jesus will receive a harsher judgment than those who who've never heard the gospel of Christ. This is why missions is so important. We must tell every one we can about the gospel of Christ. We must get the gospel out to the ends of the earth, the places from which they are called. Death has the body. Hell has the soul. The Greek word in the passage is Hades in uh, Revelation 20, 13, death and Hades deliver uh, up the dead that are in them. The graves and tombs will give up their dead. Out of the seas and desert sands, they will come. Wherever man uh, and men have died, they will be raised. There is a resurrection of the unsaved as well as a resurrection of the saved. When someone dies without Jesus, his soul immediately goes to hell, but is not yet at the judgment. The word hell used in this passage in Luke chapter 16, which is a good reference about Lazarus and the, and, and the rich man. Um, uh, hell there in that passage is a different word uh, than the one that is translated late of fire. Hell can be described as a jail where the indicted criminal is held until the judgment. The child of God who dies immediately goes to paradise. The authority and power of the summons, the resurrection of Jesus guarantees the judgment of the unsaved dead. God is just and God must judge in a just way. And it does matter what you do in this life. It does matter that you give your heart and life to the Lord Jesus Christ. It does matter that you live for Jesus after Jesus becomes your Savior and Lord. The man that God ordained is Jesus Christ. The God who, man, uh, the, the God who raised up Jesus Christ is the God who is going to raise up the unsaved dead. We cannot hide from God. The summons is coming. And so I want you to take note of that. I beg, I plead of you tonight, if you're listening to this message and you just were, uh, were scrolling, accidentally came across this message, it's intended for your heart tonight. And God is summonsing you to Jesus Christ into a personal relationship with his son. He is our only hope. He is the hope of glory. And it's a wonderful feeling when he moves inside your life and takes up residence inside your life and you know he's there. Praise God. Let's move on and let's look at a third statement tonight and that's the fatal secrets displayed in Revelation chapter 20 and verse number 12. At the judgment, there's going to come an indictment. Our lives are recorded in God's book. Nothing has escaped his knowledge. I reference Ecclesiastes 12, 14, and I reference Romans 2, 16, secrets that have been repressed. These are secrets about us that no one but God knows. 
These secrets will one day be revealed. Nothing is hidden. Absolutely nothing is hidden. Hebrews 4, 13 secrets that have been recorded. God's candid camera is recording, and I want you to hear that tonight. We will give an account for every idle word. We will give an account for every time that we've taken the Lord's name in vain. Uh, secrets uh, will be revealed. I reference Exodus 27. I reference Luke 2.12. Skeletons will come out of closets that even parents and spouses and children do not know. There's coming a judgment day uh, when we will face the record. Things in our hearts and lives that we think we've covered up will be revealed. And so uh, take note of that. Take note of uh, the reference of this third statement that I'm making tonight, and that is the fatal secrets displayed. But also tonight, we see the final sentence determined. Revelation chapter 20, verses 14 and 15 tonight, as you notice, I'm, I'm, I'm stretching this text out and talking about a few other verses tonight. I, I want us to note the sureness of, of the final sentence, Revelation uh, chapter 20, verse 12, God swears by himself that judgment is coming. He swears on his name. And we know that God's word is not going to return void. We know that God's word is true and sure. The severity of the final sentence, uh, they were judged according to their works not according to grace or mercy, according to their works. If we want grace or mercy, we may have it, but we must have it today. This is the day of mercy and grace. There's coming a day when mercy and grace will be no more. Notice that they are judged according to their works. We cannot wait and throw ourselves on the mercy of the court at judgment day. There is no room for mercy at the judgment. If you want mercy, if you want grace, I beg, I plead of you, today is the day that you can ask Jesus Christ into your heart, into your life, and he will come in and take up residence and change your life. And folks, your name will be written in the Lamb's book of life and you will go to heaven. Uh, the surety of your salvation rest in Jesus Christ, not in the church that you're a member at, not in your baptism. Uh, those things are important. Those things are crucial. It's important that you be in a church, involved in a church, digging your heels and, and, and go to work in a church and be baptized. All those things are important, but without Jesus, they don't mean a thing. Jesus is what it's all about. Won't you turn to him this very night? There are three parts to every trial. The evidence is presented against you. The books are open, and every word, thought, deed, dishonest thing, big things, small things, etc., the list goes on and on, will be presented. Nothing will be left out. You will make your defense. If your defense does not satisfy you, how do you expect to satisfy a holy God? What defense will you give? What can we possibly say for trampling on the precious blood of the Lord Jesus Christ? What can we say? The verdict of the court is handed down. The judge is Jesus Christ. The sentence for those who have refused Jesus will be eternity in hell. And your blood, my friend, as you're listening tonight, is not on my hands because I'm telling you the truth. This is not a popular message. This is not a message that we hear in a lot of churches throughout the world, but it's the true message. 
It's the gospel. It's the unadulterated gospel. It's the power of God unto salvation. And there is none other name under heaven whereby men, boys, and girls, students, anybody, everyone can be saved by the power of Jesus Christ. And he's the answer and he's the only answer, and he's the only way. He's the way, truth, and life, and no man comes to the Father except through him. He's not a way, a good way, the best way, not even the best way. He's the only way. I'm telling you, I'm telling you tonight, I'm telling you, Allah won't save you. He can, he's he, he can't. He's dead. Buddha can't save you. He's dead. All the gods of Hinduism can't save you. 330 million gods in Hinduism, polytheism to the core. They've got a God for everything, but all of them are dead and non-existent. There's one true and living God, and let me tell you, his name is Jesus Christ, and that's the name which is above every name. And one day every knee will bow and every tongue will confess that he is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Can I get an amen? C.S. Lewis stated that everyone in the world falls into two categories. Those who are like Satan, who say uh, to God the Father, not your will, but mine be done. And those who are like God the Son, who say to the Father, not my will, but thine be done. For those in the first category, their souls will one day drop into hell. As a broken-hearted God says, not my will, but thine be done. God is not willing that any should perish, my friends. I know some people say, well, you're chosen. You're chosen to be saved and you're chosen to be lost. Uh, my Bible tells me that anyone... And everyone can call on the name of the Lord and be saved. God loves the world for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And whosoever believes in him, and that involves everyone that's ever been born, you have an opportunity to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into your life. Don't miss this opportunity. Don't miss this opportunity. God does not want you to go to hell. There is no condemnation for those who believe in Jesus Christ. To God be the glory. No condemnation to those who believe in Jesus Christ. Those who believe in and trust in Jesus will not stand before the great white throne of judgment. We have settled out of court. Do you want to settle out of court tonight? Jesus Christ paid your sin debt with his death on the cross. Do you know Jesus personally? If not, you can pray to him tonight by asking him to come in your life. Call upon Jesus tonight. Repent and turn from your sin and turn to Jesus and he'll save you. Ask him to forgive you of your sins and acknowledge him as Lord of your life. And he'll come in and he'll do immeasurable things in your life. I really believe that God is up to something great and something magnificent during these days. And I really believe that if you're listening tonight and you've never trusted Jesus, that he calls you to get on this particular page of Facebook so you could hear this message that God loves you. God loves you with an everlasting love and 
God died for your sin. God died in your behalf. And you don't have to die spiritually. You can live tonight by placing your faith in Jesus Christ. God loves you. God loves you. And the fact of the matter is, God will love you all the way to hell if you continue to reject them. God loves you. And God's not willing that anyone go to hell, but that all come to redemption. Why do you think that God sent his son, Jesus? His only begotten son, Jesus. He sent Jesus so that you wouldn't have to go to hell. He came up with a plan. And his plan was his only son, to die in your stead and my stead. Praise God, I'm about to have a hallelujah spell in this office in my home tonight because I understand that the great I am, the great God of this universe chose to save me when I called out to him because he, he sent Jesus, he sent his plan, and I, call, I bought into that plan, I called out to Jesus and Jesus saved me. And guess what? Tonight, you could write in the comment section. You could write in the comment section tonight, Pastor Mike, go to hell. I can't do it. I can't go to hell. You know why I can't go to hell? Because Jesus lives in me. And he forgave me of my sin. And God has promised me a home with him in heaven. So nothing you say to me or do to me can cause me to go to hell. Praise God. Hallelujah. Let's have a spell tonight thinking about that. Let's pray tonight as we close out this time together. Thanks for tuning in tonight. And, um... Uh, this is a difficult uh, chapter and difficult subject to preach on. Great White Throne, it's not one that you uh, jump up and run the aisles on for sure. <laughs> uh, it, it's tough, but it's the gospel, and we must. It's all about the gospel. We must share the whole counsel of God. Let me pray. Dear Father, tonight we pray for a lot of needs around us. Dear Father, we pray for um, the Blackwell family. Uh, we pray tonight for the um, uh, Daltridge family and also uh, the uh, Skinner family, uh, the Walls family. Um, just a terrible uh, four-wheeler accident uh, over the weekend, we pray for that family as three are deceased uh, in a couple of families. Dear Father, we also pray for the Morgan Fisher families. Uh, we also pray for the Grifton family and also the Treat family. Dear Father, we uh, rejoice that Nathan White uh, gave his heart to Jesus. Uh, we're thrilled about that. And also Chuck Stoddard. I got a good report as well. And dear Father, on and on the list goes tonight as we continue to lift up people around us. Uh, there are a lot of people around us. We continue to pray for our, uh, our president, President Trump, Vice President Pence, all the decisions that they're making. Also, our local people, as they make decisions, we pray for them. Dear Father, again... We love you so much, and we rejoice in Jesus. Thank you for this message. Thank you for this time of opening the Word of God and sharing the Word of God uh, with uh, each other tonight. It's been a thrill. It's been an exciting time. And Lord, I thank you again for all that you do for us. And thank you that the Christian doesn't have to stand before the great white throne judgment. We have the judgment seat but we'll never see, never stand before the great white throne judgment. 
Uh, that's for the un unsaved. And Lord, uh, praise God for those that are saved. Those that are not saved, I pray that they'll make that decision and make it tonight. We love you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let me say real quickly before I sign off, Sunday morning, 1030, uh, in-person worship, but also Facebook Live, and it'll remain on Facebook. Also later, uh, this message will be on YouTube. Also, uh, Sunday's message is on YouTube. And the reason I mention all that is Sunday's a message you don't want to miss. Um, the Marriage Feast of the Lamb. Uh, I'm so excited about what God's laid on my heart for that message. And so I hope that you will tune in. Uh, better yet, be at Bimini Baptist Church on Sunday morning, 1030. God bless you. Love you. Um, you're a wonderful, uh, wonderful group. Uh, just uh, week in, week out, uh, you tune in and I'm so grateful. God bless you. Have a wonderful night. Praying for you. Love you.